Okay, are we live? Yep. All right, uh, I'm John Johansson, and my cohort is just down here. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, unprivileged access, access control in AppArmor and specifically app application directed unprivileged access control. User directed is a whole nother ball of wax. Um, so, by application directed, I mean the application is, is defining the policy. Uh, and it, so, the, and the advantage here is so that it can be dynamic because uh, the the application knows things that an outside Mac doesn't know. Um, so basically, think about sandboxing. Um, there's different reasons that you see a sandboxing, right? Uh, privilege separation, reduced privilege. It's nothing new. Uh, there's been lots of other work on this set you would have been used in the past to do it, but that's got some privileged things. The OpenBSD uh, pledge and unveil SecComp does some some stuff like this. Uh, unprivileged user namespaces and bind mounts, landlock. Uh, so why AppArmor? Um, so our uh, policy is the same, right? So we got a basic API, um, and the why AppArmor part comes down to because we, it's been something we've been wanting to do for a long time. Some design decisions actually were made around this years and years ago. Um, we have a basic API, and uh, it just lets you define a profile and tell you, tell that in your code, and then tell the app to tell the app armor that you want to confine your application with it. Um, really, AA confine is just a simple wrapper around we're going to compile that policy, and then we are going to load it into the kernel. Um, The, the compile part is, it's a wrapper around our parser stuff compiler. Right now it's very crude. It's much, very much a work in progress still. Um, and the reason we use the compiler, we have, we have to have this library is AppArmor uses a state machine. And the state machine was designed a long time ago to be very bounded. And so that we could verify it, it's much simpler than a, say BPF. Um, so it can be verified safe for a user to load stuff with some other restrictions on it. But um, So the compiler is going to convert whatever is there into uh, the, the state machine. So it's just text policy in the application, generally. And then, and then you load it, and that's got the bounding and runtime guarantees. Uh, uh, Compiling also makes sure you don't have errors instead of like say a uh, pledge or unveil which actually feeds stuff into the kernel and then they can throw an error back from the kernel. Um, so like our binaries policy, you can do that, right? You don't actually have to uh, have text. You could have pre-compiled binaries and just load it. Um, it's not dynamic though, so it kind of defeats the purpose of using an app, putting it in the application. Um, so once it's loaded into the kernel, you know, like we, we've verified it and we can replace it, we can update it unless it gets locked. Uh, it's applied to the, at the process level. Um, and that, that API we saw is very simple. It's static. Again, it's not very interesting from an application point of view. It has its place, but there's a, a dynamic API. So this is where, the, for applications, where you start seeing what you want. Um, it lets you expand the policy so you can start with a basic policy and then you can add rules to it. Um, so you create your, your base policy, whatever, and then you can add rules as you need them. Uh, and then you can tell it to confine the app, application. And then even after confining, as long as you haven't locked it out, you can update it some more. So for example here, applications updating it with a rule for argv1, so some file that was passed in, and then it's going to uh, load it up and confine itself with that extra bit. Um, you can lock that policy. Uh, it's done on the kernel side, and so once it's locked, you, the, that updating of the profile is not going to happen anymore. Um, 
you can actually add some new restrictions through stacking, and we'll get into that in a bit. Um, and it's done through a flag saying that this is, is immutable, because it's, it's just all profiles. So kernel side. Um, of course, user, users loading into the kernel. Again, we have the state machine, so we are bounding it there, but you also have to be careful about you want to be able to say, I want to be able to disable this. So not every user necessarily needs to be able to use it or should be able to use it. Um, or maybe if, if there's a bug there that you want to be able to disable it at the system level. We need to control memory, so there needs to be some memory controls on this so a user can't just uh, DOS the kernel memory. And again, it's verified. Um, there's, it's deterministic. It has very well-defined runtime bounds uh, based on input, and you can't con and the user can't control the jumps. It's all set out con well controlled there. Um, and the, of course, it's going to apply to the children. Um, so dealing with processes, this is a pain in the butt. Um, kernel deals with tasks, uh, and tasks get their own cred, right? And the threads are just a, a task that's sharing some of the data. Uh, so what we're talking about where for a thread is we're going to talk about a tree thread as a process group. Um, and with each task getting its own cred type thing, or when you do, you do updates, because in the kernel, uh, the task updates its own cred, it can cause problems. Um, so what we could do is we could say we're only going to allow uh, from user space to confine something if you are only single threaded, right? That's, that's not so good. It's, you know, there's a lot of multi-threaded applications. And part of the target here is pledge and unveil. And they actually require that you be able to update threaded applications because those applications have already been updated to work that way. Um, it's, so it's a little bit of a pain. Um, we can, we can fix that by a couple, there's a couple ways. We can do it in user space, we can do it in the kernel. In user space, if we did like an early init, um, users could do it in manual encode. We don't want to have the user have to deal with that. The less work the user, uh, the programmer has to do, the better. Um, we can do it via library with you know, CDORs, init, whatever. Uh, issue there is, depending on what your threading libraries are and everything and what your application is, we can't guarantee something like that is going to um, go run before a, a thread pool. Uh, but generally, it's pretty good. Um, like I said, other languages may run their own, run, create their own libraries. We've had that before where Go interfaces actually don't use the C app armor, uh, a, a C wrapper, a Go wrapper around the C library. They create their own and they've... Um, ignored some of the stuff so that they break at times. Um, it's basically, it's just harder to make guarantees on user space. The kernel, you can do it, but there's some overhead if you're doing it um, as tracking. We'll talk about the tracking in a minute. And there is also, you, you could do it the sec comp style where you uh, kind of freeze the task and then run through, and that's a real pain as well. Um, so right now we are doing primarily doing uh, by the CTORs and that whatever, where we flag a task that it's going to be using, um, it's going to be using application policy, so there's no overhead on applications that don't. But once that's flagged, it is tracked in the kernel the same way as if we were tracking everything. So there can be cases where it could be over a little bit, and we can actually track everything if we just uh, do a config. Um, so tracking, it's, you know, process has a task, it gets its cred, it points to our, our label, and we've got an unconfined profile, right? Uh, when you clone a thread within that process, you get two tasks. Sometimes they share a cred, sometimes they don't, but they end up both pointing to the, our label. Um, and then uh, they don't always, like, uh, they don't have to share, but again, like I said, they can point to the same label. Uh, fork, when you're doing a new process, we're going to get a, a, a split. And generally speaking, the label 
can be different, different processes, different applications, different confinement, whatever. That's okay. Um, so we can have them share as well, uh, and, and that can be inherited. So this is controlled by exec rules. It's not uh, that complicated, and it, well, okay, it is, but uh, <laughs> uh, it, it, it's, it's just part of regular AppRamer policy, right? We, we do this all the time. Um, but with uh, these, these things, it, we want a little bit more uh, control over it. So when we enter confinement, uh, the application, so it, it's, it runs through in, in the order, right? So one is we're loading the new profile in, two is we create the cred, three, we update the stru structure to point to the new profile, four, the profiles marked as stale, the old profile, whatever is on the, the task, and five, the, the task is updated to point to the new cred, right? Um, when, when we have a threaded environment, what we ha what's happened is we already have that cred, we have things tracked already, it's basically the same thing, except for the other task, it doesn't get updated right away. So when you go in and enter confinement, the one task enters confinement. The other task doesn't enter confinement, enter the new confinement for the, the application profile until it enters the LSM hook. We, we have an update, we check, see that the profile has been made stale, and then it will update itself. Um, and that's, that's what's going on here, is it, it, it enters its critical section, it grabs the new label, and then it updates itself. So the creds, the, the cred of, a, of individual threads get updated asynchronously, um, and we have to have that information there to track, and, and, and that's why there's a bit of overhead if we were doing this for every, every task in the system, because we have a little bit of, on tasks that are in application confinement where we have a little bit extra work going on with, on clone. Um, updating confinement is the same idea, right? We just, uh, we can replace the profile. It, it looks the same as processes, right? It just looks the same as we just did with entering confinement. Um, under threads, it looking pretty much the same thing, right? We're just marking it as stale. This is all regular profile replacement for us when we're doing the updating confinement. Um, and that's how we work all this is it runs like through uh, our regular profile replacement dynamic updates. Um, not a huge deal, uh, except for, for the tracking, right? Um, uh, one of the things we do have with exec is we still keep, with application policy, we still keep all of our exec type behaviors and rules. We have a rather rich set of exec behaviors you can do about how you can transition profiles. These application profiles don't generally use them mostly. They just inherit or go unconfined. Um, but they can, in some cases, actually load multiple profiles. We'll get into that with stacking later, and then they can use some of the other transitions. Um, interface right now, you know, PR control or assist control for this syscall, I mean, um, because we don't want to use the file interface that we usually use for loading policy. Um, the, you know, uh, LSM will block that. Our own policy will block that. Um, we couldn't use the LSM syscall because the LSM syscall, well, it's not for loading policy, right? Um, we could app create an app armor specific syscall, but for the moment, we're just using a PR control just because it was easier. Um, uh, as we get this in better shape, we may move, uh, try adding a syscall instead. Um, so introspection is just through the regular LSM interfaces that we're all familiar with. Um, so the proc adder interfaces or through the new LSM syscalls. And what you'll see is the, this weird double slash and thing is stacking. Uh, that's how we show, expose it to the, the label to the user, user space. Um, and so unconfined and app would be, it's, you, it's unconfined at system policy level, but we have an application policy ad, uh, on this app, uh, application. Um, 
So how does it interact with system policy? Well, when, <laughs> when we have uh, our, our application policy, it's always gonna be stacked against system policy. So there, it, they will both be in effect at the same time. Um, and what that basically means is that application has the intersection of however many profiles are stacked on it. So it could be two, that's probably the most common, but it could be more than two. And what it's allowed is just the intersection of all those. Like, so with three, it would be the middle of you know, this fame, you know, standard Venn, the Venn diagram. Um, it's put into its own policy scope. So what this basically means is uh, so when you have applications that are interacting, uh, say one process with another, there's, there's, there's things like say Unix domain sockets where you're communicating across IPC wise and your rule, your policy wants to say, you know, this task can talk to this task, you know, this, this subject can talk to that, that subject or object, whatever you want to call it. Um, so what this does is it says, being in its own scope, the applications policy doesn't inter interact or interfere with the system policy. So system policy doesn't have to worry or care that the uh, user policy is in place. It, 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 you just use system policy, it doesn't change. Uh, and that's just showing that, you know, that it, they can talk to each other. The applications themselves can, uh, at the policy level, the system does at the policy level. Uh, so, one of, the, one of the things we have is, okay, we have application policy, but you have to go update your applications, right, to use it. And nobody really is gonna do that except for, a, you know, for a few special cases. Uh, part of the motivation here is Pledge and Unveil has been around for a while, and applications have been updated for this already. So. Can we take and can we map Pledge and Unveil into the AppArmor API? And some of this is also working towards improving the AppArmor side of things as well so that we can do better, right? And it's a work in progress. Um, how close can we get? It's not gonna be 100%, uh, but we can actually, we think we can get pretty close. Um, so Pledge, that's the, the pledge syscall that you get from OpenBSD. It has a set of promises and exec promises. Those promises, there's text strings. Um, and those are, the, those are the current set of uh, promises that uh, BSD lets you make. Um, each of those has a whole bunch of defined semantics to them. Uh, very interesting when you go through some of these uh, they're very, if you talk to BSD people, it's like, well, we don't have a, you know, an exact definition of what they are. We kind of revise them as we test things and, and they, they have revised over time, uh, the behaviors of them. Uh, it's so update will have to be made at some point. Um, the set of promises, so it's just, like I said, it's a text string. You, get, you list which promises you wanna make. Uh, the null on the exec promises just means we're not making any exec promises. It's not affected, right? We're not doing anything there. Um, you can't, with pledge, you can't update but to add new promises. You can only take away. Once you've pledged something, you are only ever reducing your permissions that you're granting. Um, so in this case, you can't add the Unix uh, promise. But you can, you can go down like that, right? Um, and you can, if you, if you don't put any promises in there, it's an empty string instead of null, that says basically, uh, I don't wanna be able to do anything except for basic compute. Um, and how they define it is uh, basically only the exit syscalls allowed. So that's bringing in some you know, syscall level stuff. Uh, what, we're, what we're doing now is we, we have a little library and you, it gives the, the, the pledge unveil interface. So we take that text string and we parse it in user space and we convert it into tokens obviously. And then we convert that into a set of app armor rules for each one of those uh, promises. Um, they could be multiple. 
whoa. <laughs> they, they could be multiple uh, promises, or it's just, you know, I mean, multiple rules, or it could, in some cases, just be one. Uh, got a second here. Can I get this back? Uh, there we go. There we go. Um, and in the case for development purposes, we actually are allowing us to call out and have some user space rules defined. So we, we, we can include those in and update without having to recompile this library. We can do some revisions. Um, it, it just allows us to tweak and, and improve stuff without, you know, easy as development. Eventually, those are going to have to be all folded back in and not allowed because if you think about pledge and unveil and stuff, some of those pledges stuff, then you can't get out to these even. You can't include the external files. Um, we don't have a perfect mapping, like I said. Um, pledge uses stuff that is, you know, some things map really well to the LSM, uh, but not the syscall level, right? Um, we are looking at bringing some sec comp in to help with making this a better, uh, more accurate emulation of the uh, pledge. Um, but mm, we'll see. <laughs> the sec comp side is interesting in itself. So, so one, of some, one of the things we have to do to try to get closer to pre pledge is like I said, we were working on, we've been working on revising AppArmor, updating it, and extending it. So breaking promises in pledge, uh, the defined behavior is you get a SIG abort, and the application gets killed. Um, that's not generally how AppArmor works. We generally do a return E access. Uh, so a little bit different there. Um, we do have a flag that you can set on profiles to kill flags um, and to kill pro pro processes if they violate rules. Um, it's normally sig kill and not sig abort, uh, but we've added the ability to set the flag so the profile can change, or the, the signal, so the profile can change what signal is going to get sent. Uh, so that would get us to the sig abort side of things. Um, except we're not always sig abort with pledge. There is the exec pro promise and the air promise. So the air promise turns all the other promises into for turning errors and si instead of signals. That's not too hard to handle in the mapping. Uh, it, the parse just recognizes that we have an error and then we don't set the signal, the, the, the kill flag. Um, exec's harder because exec isn't not uh, uh, the kill signal ever. It is um, an Eno sys. <laughs> so lots of fun there. Um, again, not AppArmor's normal behavior. Um, so in this case, we actually have added the ability to set, uh, and that, oh, oh, that was the air behavior too, right? Exec's a little different. But air, when it, you set the air pledge, it's not E access, it's Eno sys. Um, so We've made it so you can set the air code that's going to be returned. Um, uh, e access is the behavior for exec. I, if it, 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 it so no no kill, not eno sys, you get e access. <laughs> kind of a pain. Uh, so. Some, this, is some of the, this is some of the work that has not landed yet. We're working on it. So um, what we've gone here is to give us more flexibility than instead of just a, a global profile flag, being able to set these on a per rule basis. So now we can control and say, if I want to kill on this set of rules, I can do that. If I want to air out on these set of rules, I can do that. Um, and the priority stuff will let the compiler know if things overlap, which one's important, how they overlap, uh, where the, you know, when they overlap, where to resolve what. Um, and even the error code sort of can be set. The reality is you only can have two of them, 
but it can be set which one you're using at, a, at the rule level. Uh, so that, that gets us all the combinations for pledge. Uh, this is very much still a work in progress. So what does it look like? Uh, right now, we last, like, pledge on BSD, we'll use like last.com. We don't actually work with last.com, right? Or last, not last.com, last.com. It'll set a P on it for applications that had the pledge. Uh, we don't work with that right now, so we're just working through regular introspection. What you'll see is, again, you'll see stacking, right? You see the system profile is unconfined, and then you see P. We're just following what Pledge does there. It uses P and U, so it, you, you see a P on the application. Uh, and we haven't uh, looked at extending, like Serenity OS has a proc, uh, what is it, proc unveil and a something else for pledge uh, that are other extensions, ways to introspect that we haven't looked at yet. Um, so pledge exec, unless you set an exec promises, usually what it is, is, is it's what we would call a UX, so transition to unconfined. So you, we're gonna drop the, the application profile and then, um, Basically, you go back to being just system profiles if, if, that, if, they're, if the execs allowed like that. Um, when you have a, an exec promise, that changes the behavior. What happens is we change the application profile to do a, what we call a CX. That CX takes a second profile that's loaded with the pledge profile that handles the exec privilege or exec promise. And we now transition to that on exec. So it's, it's kind of like a regular app arm or policy transition. We just have set it up so that the two go together um, when we build profiles. Uh, promise reduction. So we, we mentioned that pledge can only ever reduce, right? And we, we talked about the app armor API allows, until you lock it, allows you to increase your privilege. Um, so how do we do this? We want the promise reduction to only ever, we want guarantees on it, right? Um, but we also need to allow updating in a sense because we, we want to reduce what you're allowed. So to guarantee that, to make that guarantee, we want the guarantee to come from the kernel. And so how do we do this? Um, we're not doing it through profile gener generation and user space. Um, so we set a, a, the immutable flag on our profile that we're putting in pre pledge to guarantee that you can't replace it, can't update it. Um, we, what we end up doing is we start doing some stacking to do this right now. This is not ideal. So it, every time you reduce your promises, you get an extra pledge profile uh, and you get the intersection of them. So as it, 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 you could technically increase your promises, except for user space will try to reject that. But even if you manage to do that, you still, your kernel side, get that guarantee, you get the intersection of them, and it only ever reduces. It looks ugly and gets worse as it gets longer on the introspection. Um, and there's a little bit of a runtime cost to it, too, because uh, regularly an AppArmor profile, when we compile it, we optimize it, and it's, it, you have, it's the same amount of time to watch, match a thousand rules as a single rule. We're here because it's dynamic. The more profiles you have, that's three profiles worth walking, right? So there's a linear cost to it there as well for the matching. Um, we don't want to do that. That's kind of what you would see on the introspection, right? P and P and P. <laughs> uh, so we're working on moving to Boolean conditionals. Uh, and so what happens here is we're going to lock the profile, but we're going to allow some Boolean variables that are exposed and allow user space to toggle those Boolean variables. And this is going to give us our promise reduction. Uh, what happens is the right to access the Boolean variable is tied inside the Boolean variable conditional. And so you have to have, to be able to set that Boolean variable, you have to have it already. And once you have it and dr drop it, then you can't access it again. Um, and then it takes away the rules as well. 
And this can be done at runtime. And so this is some of the work that's going on right now is to add these Boolean conditionals to this. And so we can, we can just have a single profile and have that performance. And then it changes the way we have to do the update of the, in the, the library, but that's not a big deal. It's all hidden. Um, so unveil. This one, when you look at it first, is um, it seems like it's easier to map to AppArmor. It's file. It's it's all about the file system. Uh, AppArmor tends to like files, uh, and what it is, you specify a path, and then you specify some permissions. And the permissions are just R, W, X, and C for create. Um, and it's a straight mapping on the air code that it returns back. So E access. Uh, that's, that, that's nice. Uh, it's mostly anyways, it's not quite. Um, so it, it's very easy with unveil. Once you start doing unveil, you just can keep adding new promises. So this maps back to the AppArmor API pretty well again. We just add a new rule and load it and you have access to it. And what unveil does is unveil at some point, Oh, there's, you know, we'll, we'll, with directories, you can add directories, and it, we just map it over directories and file rules, whatever. The, the directories are expressed as text strings, but they have some interesting properties to them under unveil, and we'll get into that in a minute. Um, and relative paths, we just map it into a variable. Uh, same thing on the, the directory. How do we handle these? There's, there's a couple different ways, whether it's a kernel variable or a user space variable to be worked with. Um, so unveil, like I said, directories have some interesting behavior. What happens with unveil is once you do an unveil of a directory, you get everything underneath it. Um, so that's kind of the tree, right? That, uh, the whole directory tree underneath. You have access and you have those permissions that you specified, uh, sort of. Unless you make another unveil that is different than and more specific than the, the other directory. So then you get a, a different subset. Um, this is actually hard to express in AppArmor at the moment. It's possible to do it programmatically. Uh, but as, as you're trying to write AppArmor rules, if you're trying to write an AppArmor rule, this is actually hard to express. Um, we are doing some work to make this easier to express in policy uh, for a human. But interestingly, that one's actually hard for us to express in policy at the moment. Um, so there's some other behaviors with directories that are interesting. So directories added after you make an unveil, even if they're in that, that area covered by the unveil, are hidden. Um, so this is a different behavior, and we actually don't handle this right now. Uh, we have some ideas on how to handle this, uh, but it's one of the areas where we fail on unveil at the moment, this, this hidden directory. Uh, with unveil mappings, again, the null null like this means to lock unveil. So, what happens there is we just set the immutable flag and load it up. So it's very much like pledge in that sense. Once you've done that, uh, then, you, 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 then you can't replace or update your unveil profile. Um, on introspecting again, you'll see instead of the P, you're getting the U. OK, so, uh, so let's talk about how we can bring these together. Uh, so you, like I said, you get profiles. So what we're going to do is for pledge, you get a profile. For unveil, you get a profile. And that can stack with the system profile. You can, the pledge profile can be locked. And the unveil can be unlocked while it's being updated until your unveil promise is removed um, or you lock it. Uh, So we have some different semantics also with a pledge and unveil. We talked about them already. Um, Sigabort versus e-access. Um, the unveil is you're building it up until you lock it down. The pledge 
you're locked down and reducing all the way. And we can handle this all at the, the profile level. Um, and all that is handled at the profile level. So that can coexist within the stack. Uh, and so just because you have your profile over on pledge killing things, your unveil profile, if it's doing violations, it will do the e-access behavior. Uh, same with system policy. The system po policy will behave the way it's supposed to. Um, yeah, we did those. <laughs> Uh, and then, again, when you have them both, you're going to get your system policy at the introspection. You're going to get your pledge profile. You're going to get your unveil profile all showing up. Again, it's not exactly the same thing as BSD there for introspection, but the regular system uh, interface, Linux interfaces aren't the same as OpenBSD interfaces either. Um, so do we have any questions? A question early on. Yeah. I don't know if that's working. Um, what order do they stack in? So is it system first and then followed by application or application followed by system? Okay. Um, it's, a, it's an interesting question and it will depend. So it's a little more complicated than that. So our, it, it's based on policy namespaces. And so policy namespaces are hierarchical and the, the, fir the first in the hierarchy is going to be the first in the, the, the listing. So say your root. Um, and then you can have uh, your next, so like your pledge and unveil or whatever. And, but the reason I say it's complicated is, say we do a pledge or unveil at the system level, and we've created also a child uh, policy namespace. And that child policy namespace um, has some other application policy in it, say for a container or something, and that it is doing its own system policy, so say LXD, right? So the system level pledge unveil will show up before the policy that you, uh, in the, in, that's in the container in the container namespace. So it, it, it will sort, canonically it sorts based on level of hierarchy and then it, does a, it has a canonical text order based on name and address is the fallback as well. Hi. Hi. Nice talk. Um, yeah. Um, I had the sense of deja vu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, it looks, yeah, it looks, from my opinion, it looks a lot like an unlock. It, 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 like I said, at the beginning, it is something that has been done several times, right? It's, it's a bit like landlock. It's a bit like pledge and unveil. It maps better to pledge and unveil than it maps to landlock. Uh, there's some other ones out there as well, right? Um, and like I said, today we're talking specifically about application-directed policy. There's another side to this where the user can have a, a user policy namespace, and the user can define policy for the user's application that is different than the system policy. And that policy can be loaded and it can be stacked again and with the application policy, with the system policy. So it's, it's, it's quite a flexible mechanism. Yeah. yeah, so that's exactly the goal of Landlock. And that's why you have the same changes. And yeah, I'm sure you took a look at Landlock. So yeah, I was wondering what is the difference. I mean, for an, an API point of view, yes, there's a difference, but you can implement the same way and veil and pledge with just a use based library using Linux syscalls. So you but, can. Yeah. Yes. So like I said, um, they, they, they each are approaches to it. We want to make sure that, uh, how to put this, we want to make sure that things are available and we want to make sure it integrates to the system the way we want it to integrate. And we're not against landlock at all. We are just trying to provide options. Um, and uh, it's a different way to do it. And when I said uh, this has been in the works a long time, uh, the, 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 some of the decisions around the, uh, the, uh, the state machine were actually made back in 2005, 2006 era to, to, with the goal, stated goal of being able to expose this to users. 
So th this has actually kind of been in the work for a very long time. Okay, so yeah, it would be interesting to see how it goes. And yeah, I'm wondering how it could be received. Uh, I mean, mainly upstream of the canal. So if you need to add new Cisco, which I guess you will need to. Because Potentially, it would be, it would be either a new syscall or a PR control. Like I said, right now we're we're, we're just using that. But whether that's a, the best interface, yeah, probably not. Um, yeah, yeah. Second, so use PST at first, and then yes. edit a dedicated syscall. Yes, that's why with with Unlock we created new dedicated syscalls. Yes, exactly. So, but there there is also, I mean, from an LSM standpoint, a lot of the LSMs have desired a syscall for a long time. There are app operations we have within AppArmor that we would rather have a syscall for, that we have been forced in the past to go through the file system interface. Um, and so some of those have been taken care of by the LSM syscall. So for example, uh, the set proc adder, uh, others have not. And, and so it would be very nice from for our point of view to be able to load policy through a syscall instead of the, through the file system interface because we do have situations where we would like to be able to load policy and without having to to mount uh the security fs into say the container yeah yeah and it's this so it's very similar to what's going on with landlock um n there's no no question or debate about that right um it's just a w different way of achieving it and uh and it integrates in with what we were already doing. It's just trying to complete out the model. And there are some use cases where we have, uh, for example, integrating at the AppArmor level where we would have like a system label where the application policy could say, I want to take the system label and do something based on it where the, app, uh, the system policy doesn't want to interact with uh, the stacked application policy. So there are some, there's, like I said, there's some system integration bits there. Um, uh, it's just what it is, right? Don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, I don't, but, um, and last question. Um, so yeah, um, well, same go to Gale. Again, uh, Lanog was designed to be able to implement and veil with the limitation that you just highlighted because mm -hmm. Linux is not a BSD. And so did you take a look? So yeah, so in OpenBSD, there's a, like hundreds of application sandbox with unveil and pledge. Right. Um, did you try to run, well, I mean, OpenBSD is a whole system providing user space as well. Right. And they did a lot of forks of open source projects for OpenBSD. Yep. And I think most of the unveil and pledge calls are in these forks, not in the upstream open source, source code, which is used by Linux distro and so on. So I was wondering, yeah, in theory, that's a good thing. And I would like to do the same uh, with Lanlock. Um, but in practice, it looks like, well, that's not really the same source code. And as you highlighted, um, the semantic is kind of moving because it is. You're right, and that's one of the the big problems with the application policy side of things. The unprivileged policy, application policy, is the force, the source code gets forked. Uh, the semantics between different source code bases drift. So cherry picking patches from BSD say into our Linux version of it. Uh, it you know, you get conflicts, and even if you get it to, to, to go in, doesn't mean that it actually uh, is doing what it's supposed to do. Yeah. Um, and this is one of the things about developing these promises um, is they have to be tweaked. And one part of the work of this is trying to come out with a good set of mapping, you know, trying to run different things and get a mapping that is good for most of them because it's going to be a little bit different on Linux than it is on BSD. And even on BSD, like your different versions of BSD, those promises actually change what they do because they've been refining them as themselves. Um, 
it, it's you're right. It's it's a problem. Um, it's and, but it's better for applications for us to try to take you know like pledge and unveil uh, than say use our API, right? They our API is there. There's a few cases where it'll get used, but that that API is more flexible. But it's in reality, it's only going to be used in a few special cases. Yeah, that's well. Most of the pledge and unveil patches were written by OpenBSD developers. I mean. Yep. Core developers, so not generic application developers. Um, but yeah. Um, well, that would be interesting to see how it goes. Yeah. But, and yeah, last thing, just remember that, uh, in fact, there's already uh, an Unveil library implementing Unveil for Linux with yes. Comp and Landlock. So, did you think about contributing to this library? Uh, so we have looked at it a little bit. Um, will we contribute to it? P possibly. Um, we're uh, how to put it. Where that where where we can probably get work mostly for this is in picking patches into applications for pledge and unveil. So we have people who are interested in getting pledge and unveil in the Linux application base. Uh, you know those patches for those specific applications, and so that's one of the one of the places where there will be contribution to, to for Landlock as well, because there's more applications that use Pledge and Unveil on Linux. That also works for uh, Landlock's Pledge and Unveil, right? Um, can we uh, contribute to those libraries? Possibly. Uh, I can't promise anything. Uh, Anything work time related to that, right? Uh, could it be uh, personal time, possibly? Okay, thank you. All right. Anything else? Yeah, I just had a quick yeah. comment around the syscall discussion. Um, and I know we've kind of talked about this a little bit. So initially, we have three LSM syscalls right now. None of them, like you said, are anything that would be suitable for loading policy. But just because we have these three now doesn't mean we can't expand that list in the future. So, um, you know, maybe it makes sense for it to be an AppArmor specific system call, but there's a number of LSMs which load policy. You know, if we wanted to create an LSM policy loading syscall, I think that would be a reasonable discussion to have. You know, the LSM system calls are not limited to just the three that we have today. Correct. Um, like I said, you know, PR control for now because it's easy and where we go from there, I, I do expect it's going to be a syscall, uh, but the syscall, well, that's, you know how that goes, right? That takes a long time to design and there'll be a lot of back and forth on stuff like that. All right. Well, thank you. <laughs>